That was distracting, sorry. It's My name is Tyler well. Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales, sales Wolves. Wolves. Ow! I already gave mine. Ow! 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 <laughs> God, that's nice. Speaking of which, I need it's to go so live soft on Facebook. And... Thank you. Supple? It's very yuck. Dude. All right, so we're going I on Facebook Live right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get Facebook Live set up. We're recording some sales world podcasts. And the, re <laughs> the reason I wanted to do that afterwards so that people can know on this end that are watching it later when That's we're uh, he got his head cut off. There you go. That we don't hold up. We don't edit any of this stuff. We just have Ricky throw the intro and the outro to it. And yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, so man. I think that's the way it should be. Absolutely. So, what is this podcast all about? Two full um, task. So it's a podcast. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see that um, question they asked President Bush when they asked him about um, <laughs> when they asked him about? God, what was it? Uh, the sovereignty of the Indian nation and its relationship to the sovereignty of the United States. And he looked at it and he pulled his hands up and he said, you have two sovereign nations and the relationship between the two is one of sovereignty. <laughs> it was the funniest crap I've ever seen. And then a reporter catches his eye and he winks with this little smile, like I don't know what I'm talking about. It was hilarious. Have, you, see, have you seen uh, what he's doing lately? Uh, painting? No. He just I think he just released like a book of like. Talk about like GW. Ninety-five paintings, eighty-five or ninety-five paintings that he's done. I think of generals. I think it's of like war heroes. Really? I think it's of people that were deployed while he was. That's what it was. He was uh, commander in chief. They got injured, and he goes and back and paints them. Paints them. Oh, I bet it's a big charity too. He probably has a foundation that he follows yeah, the well, you know proceeds who, uh, through and helps them. No idea. Um, I'm just, you know who also was a big painter, and it was part of the reason that led him to start painting was um, Winston Churchill. Was, was he a big really? time painter? Yeah, interesting. Big time painter. It was in his book that he read that, uh, and that's why he started painting. Interesting. Well, so anyways, I wonder if Hitler would have been a big painter. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Huh. Who knows? So twofold task. Why are we here? What is the Sales Wolves Podcast all about? Number one is to show appreciation for salespeople. Uh, and whether you realize it or not, you are in sales, um, no matter what you do. Because Everybody. uh, everyone's selling themselves or selling an idea, yeah. um, selling something that they want. So that's important to know. Uh, we want to show appreciation and support for you. And the second is the actual tactical training uh, that we want to be able to provide. And why don't we go ahead and hit on this? I know we were going to hit on it at some point in the next few podcasts, uh, but really, there's a lot of sales podcasts out there that are just strictly just practical sales training Tips. period. Yep. Best way to overcome the top five objections, yep. you know, how to not annoy your prospects, yep. how to do this, how to use a CRM for blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That are really, really a lot more, I guess that would be tactical mm -hmm. um, in, in their delivery. Uh, but I know you wanted to touch on the fact that ours is really kind of more of a developing the person because until That's you right. are developed, develop the skills you need as a person and the different things as far as disciplines that until then really the training on the the hardcore tactical and it, stuff and it's good matter. you can take somebody I, you you could take you or i could go into a sales position somewhere and they could teach us sales skills which is what you're talking about mm -hmm. teach us teach us the tactical skills and we would get a certain level of success with those if yeah. we used them and implemented them and, and whatever but you're never going to succeed at a great level until you develop the person, mm. right? All lasting change starts internally, not externally. The internal brings about the external, right? You can't point to a situation where the external brought about the internal. Sure. So 
um, it's 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 just fascinating. But yeah. but self development, personal development, and we we most assuredly the reason why we called this sales wolves is we don't want to get lumped in with the uh, with the internet sensations and the yeah. personal coaches. I ain't your personal coach, mm -hmm. and uh, I can guarantee you don't want him to be. <laughs> um, but uh, just because. I, we would be we're ruthless like uh, yeah. I don't you wouldn't pay us to be coached by us yeah, but uh, no um, but uh, but we wanted to provide people with the ammunition to change themselves yeah. because really tactical stuff is 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 an effort to change the circumstances mm -hmm. right when if you take practical and self-development and you change the person the circumstances automatically change. Does that make change sense? Change the perspective. Change the perspective. That's changing the circumstances. circumstances. Exactly. Change, that's right. And, and really, in that way, that we're able to to provide value for anyone, yeah. uh, and that's and that's ultimately uh, the goal. So today's topic uh, is titled "Today Matters," because it does, and, and it does. Uh, the only day that matters more. There's, There's not the one. <laughs> what's that one saying that they always say is like, what's the best time to plant a tree yesterday? What's the second best time today or something like that? No, best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Next best time That's is today. <laughs> right. Oh, it's so much better when it's right. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's all right. So what do you want to go into on this, on Today Matters, on your priorities and setting up daily You know, routine. we were chatting earlier that success is really a culmination of just daily activities, right? There's no, God, man, everybody wants the slimy secret. Yeah. Um, everybody wants the the Harry Potter wand, right? To, to I don't know any man. magical words, uh, Abra but Abra. abracadabra, whatever. <laughs> Open says me, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll rub the lamp sometimes. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a process, right? It's a process of daily activities, yeah. and and we broke down some stuff. There was a couple stories. One awesome Andy Frisella story that we loved that you're gonna mm -hmm. chat about, and and uh, and then we're gonna get into some practical application. Like, what does when you talk about daily activities, what does that mean? Do I just need to make a bunch of phone calls, or do I just need to have a calendar, or what does it look sure. like, right? So we just yeah. So Andy, things. I've mentioned this I think a time or two before, but. I just love it so much because it, it has to do with a lot of the stuff that we're putting out there and somehow how it can be received or, or mm -hmm. perceived uh, by the viewer. And Andy had has people all the time, but he, but he discusses a couple um, specific situations where people reached out to him with an email um, or, or when he met him in person, they would say, you know, how do you stay so motivated? You know, how do you yeah. always seem so inspired? How do you always have so much energy? How do, how do you always, how do you maintain that level uh, of, of um, energy and motivation, you know, throughout your day? And he's like, I don't. Like, yeah. Like, my motivation, motivation doesn't last. Um, and that when I wake up on a random Tuesday morning, I may not feel inspired at all, mm -hmm. uh, but that it has nothing to do with motivation, that it has everything to do with discipline. Mm -hmm. And so it's developing those disciplines by, um, by implementing changes over time, mm -hmm. um, those daily activities that we're going to talk about, um, and developing those, those disciplines to where they become uh, subconscious, like you were talking right. about, where you don't even have to think about them because they've just become a part of who you are and what you do on, that's right. on a daily basis. Um, and that that's where the true mastery comes mm -hmm. into uh, when you talk about living a... Um, uh, a purpose-driven life or, or a fulfilled life, that's where that mastery, I think, oh. really comes out is in developing your personal every single day routines that are subconscious and that ultimately are pushing you towards where you want to go. Um, that's difficult. It's extremely difficult. It is difficult because we're hardwired early on and we develop bad habits and habits are what, are what you know, we were talking about driving a car and we're doing a whole podcast on this later, but yeah. um, another week, but we've got some awesome podcasts coming. But uh, but talking about driving a car, when you when you engage your consciousness and you start thinking about it, you engage your mind, you start thinking about something, who drives the car? Yeah. The subconscious drives the car. And so knowing that you still get where you're going, right? You drove the car, you got to work, or you got to the place that, where you were going, but knowing that, um, now you need to develop the habits, right? So, so in the morning, if I wake up and I'm like you were talking about, I'm not um, motivated, which I'm not. Sometimes when I wake up at two, three, four in the morning, I am not motivated 
to get to work mm-hmm. or to get to the gym, right? But you have to develop those habits and do it long enough mm-hmm. that when you're not motivated, the fallback or you're thinking of something else, you're engaged in something else, you fall back on the habit of work out mm-hmm. or work or make the phone calls. Or, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like those are the new subconscious that just drives you yeah. and, and continues to move you forward. So some practical applications uh, that we were going to talk about. These are easy. These are, these are simple to do, right? Um, the first one is uh, wake your ass up early. <laughs> Get up early. Mm-hmm. Man, you get up early. Yeah. You are not a morning person, are you? No. Nah. No, I'm, I'm a morning person. I'm not. I'm, I'm a morning person once I'm up and moving, but the 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 actual act of making the choice of getting up then when you really don't have to. There's right. There's stuff that you can do. You can you can sleep in another hour, another two hours, and no one would mm-hmm. ever say anything. It wouldn't affect anything today. But mm-hmm. again, daily activities over a long period of time. Yep. Um, it comes down to, for me, it comes down to opportunity cost. Um, if you start thinking, yeah, I can use this time right now, um, you know, what what income producing or something that's gonna at least push the ball forward today can I do right now? Um, that way, uh, when later I do wanna spend time with my child mm-hmm. or I do wanna uh, be able to go home at this hour mm-hmm. or not be gone this day, those, right. those hours, it's almost like a bank account. You just stockpile those hours sure. and hours and hours. And I always talk uh, to people about um, those times in the week where you can get the edge up on your competition, like Friday, like I love, like Friday afternoons are the best time to just absolutely hustle because you know for a fact that your competition out there is not. And right. you have to take advantage of those little times that you have where you can um, get the edge up on on the competition, get the edge up on um, really just your your life in general. Get the edge up on yourself. Yeah. Man, if the, if the mm-hmm. past you got up at eight, man, get up at six, yeah. right? I, I I was I get up usually between two and four in the morning and I'm a weirdo okay most people don't do that um, I have other habits that you guys don't have that are bad and I need to break and one of them's cussing so you know you know I don't judge you for sleeping in until six so don't judge me for saying cuss words <laughs> I like that <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but we were talking the other morning it was sometime before six in the morning or six thirty or five forty five or something. And I was running, I literally felt like I was running behind. And and you were like, what time did you get up? And I was like, 4.45. And it dawned on me yeah. that that I had created such a, you were like, 4.45. Like, yeah, I slept in. Well, that's not really sleeping in. No. But I felt like I had slept in, like I was behind the eight ball, you know? Yeah. And then, and I realized, I was like, huh. I've created such a habit of early getting stuff done early in the morning that 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 almost sounds comical to say. Yeah, right? so absolutely. Um, and so beyond waking up early, it's what you do before you go to sleep. So the night before, uh, planning out your day. Oh, yeah. um, the saying you know, that we've said a million times that if if you don't have to plan, you're planning to fail. Yeah. Uh, or if you fail to plan, you're planning um, planning to fail. Um, being able to map out what your day is going to look like. You're not uh, bad the, the night before. Say, I know. I always get them like close enough to where people are like, yeah, I get it. Man, that's like the pot calling the kettle and kettle jumping into the dark fire. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like stirring a kettle or something. <laughs> and so a lot of these, what, what these things are throughout your day are they're, they're defining moments. And, and so much of this, the practical, the practical, um, aspect of this is being able to identify moments in your day uh, when you can choose to do the right thing, when you can choose to get up on that first alarm clock and not hit snooze. That's a, that's a choice and that's one of the, the, the quickest way that you can affect the entire rest of your day is by making the first decision the right one. Yep. Uh, so if you get up without hitting snooze and you start your day by making a conscious decision to, to, to to be on the positive end of that decision, to wake up early versus late and making the first decision correct will set the course of the rest of your entire day. For making It'll, decisions. Absolutely, it's it starts, you wanna start your day with a momentum swing up, not, yeah, <laughs> not yeah, yeah. down. And it just, it affects everything. Um, the days that I wake up the earliest are the days that I get the most done. And I don't believe it's because I was up longer, because I may have stopped sooner, but I just got more done because it was started 
the right way. The right way. Um, yeah. and, and it's like the busier you get, the more you get done. Like the more random stuff I get done that's not even what's making me busy. I just get like, I, I win in all areas of my life when I'm the absolute busiest. Yeah. It's just crazy because you, it is, it, yeah. you like, you put these things into pockets as though they're like tasks, you know, yeah. and you just have to make sure like, oh, I'm busy. I got to stay super focused on getting everything done versus when you're not busy and you're like losing in all the areas. Right. It makes no sense. You're like, it is you know, insane. how, how hard am I going to have to work today at not hardly working? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, We've all been guilty that's a of. grace. Did you hear that somewhere? <laughs> no. I don't know. <laughs> How hard have I got to work today at not hardly working? Someone That's said, freaking hilarious. Someone sent me something years ago, and it was when I was that not, sounds not like a beautiful hard. bearded man would say it that. It said something <laughs> like, "Like how hard am I going to have to work today to make it look like I'm working hard or something?" Yeah, <laughs> it should be like the Instagram uh, quote of the year. So Tyler talked about starting the night before with organization and planning. If you're not, if you're failing to plan, you're planning to fail, right? So organization, another takes a takes another twist you you, know, you have your your tasks and the things you want to accomplish you need to know what's most important what are you dreading the most that's the most important and you know what you do uh, that first yeah. and and you just check those things off because when you attack in the morning when you get up and 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 you're rested which good rest is a key mm. uh, when you've gotten good rest and you get up you're rested you're ready to roll and you attack the hardest, most important things first, that also sets a tone. Everything else goes downhill, right? You you pick the most uncomfortable, the most money-making, the hardest thing, mm -hmm. absolute first. I read a book on it one time, it's called Eat That Frog. Mm -hmm. I don't remember why they called it that, because I'm not real sure, because I do eat frog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's anyway, um, but uh, but <laughs> the concept of defining moments. You were gonna you were getting ready to touch on that before, and already talked about the do hard things first. Yeah, I mean, so that's what it is. It's just identifying those those moments in your day, um, and at the at the end of it, looking at okay, there was let's just say there was seven moments today where you know I could have made a choice to do this or I could have done that, and you know four of them. I chose the right thing, yep. the thing that pushed me forward. So today, I've won the day. Yep. And then it becomes to, you know, how many days did you win in order to win your week? And then weeks and months. Uh, and, and ultimately, that's how you win at life, if you just take that on out. Uh, but and develop habits, too, by the way. The along, ha winning exactly. is a habit. Exactly. Winning's a habit. And and I guess the, the very early formation of those habits are... are, are conscious decisions to do something when before you wouldn't have or or Correct. do the right thing when um when before you would have uh done and not necessarily the wrong thing just the less productive thing right um good which is, is super important uh, and then the compounding application of that is just when you make those decisions and you start doing those small things over a long period of time it starts to turn into huge, huge areas of success in your life, um, especially when they become subconscious, when they become part of your routine, part of your, um, part of your everyday rituals. When you first wake up, these are the things that I just, I just do. Like when they become, like when you think of not doing it, and you're like, what do you, what do you mean? Like why wouldn't yeah. I wake up at four thirty this morning? Um, yeah. What, what would I do? <laughs> and when, yeah. it, when it gets to that level. Uh, and, and there was a book, The Slight Edge, by mm -hmm. um, was it Jeff Olson, um, and it's uh, it had a lot of MLM um, connotation to the to the message. But the ultimate message from the book was, you know, showing up consistently over a long period of time, um, and, and that's what it's all about. Yep. That's what it's all about. That compounding effect. And there was another quote that I heard recently, and it talked about how do. Um, do the small things like they're big things and one day you'll do enormous things like they're small things. And if you think about that, it's pretty interesting. But it is the compounding effect that one day, you want some dream? Was that your dream? <laughs> <laughs> that, that one day that those small things that you were treating as though they were big deals and it was a big deal to make that, to make that uh, switch, to make that change, that later on you'll be doing these enormous things as though they're just little mm -hmm. everyday things just because you've developed that compounding uh, effect over the course of years. me drinking your drink was my way of saying you're talking enormously. 
I'm just messing. That was awesome. That was really good stuff. And we we were talking earlier, and we're doing a podcast on uh, conscious and subconscious mm -hmm. and the mind and that kind of because it's fascinating. And there's so much scientific research now. But one little thing that I'll touch on was a driving example we used earlier. Your conscious thought, willpower. I'm going to think about this, do this, be disciplined right here. Is 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 um, five percent is in control five percent of your day. Hmm. Is that crazy? That's your crazy. subconscious is in control ninety five percent of your day. Hmm. So if that's true, then our goal should be to train and use those habits to program the subconscious so that it gets to where you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. What what else would I do at four thirty? Why wouldn't I wake up at four thirty? What else would be going on? So, um, anyway, that's uh, that's that's our podcast today. That is. You got anything else for it, man? Anything to touch base on? No, we're next uh, podcast. The next podcast is going to be great. It's on. It's going to be on a little bit of what you were just getting into um, when that subconscious about the voice within. Uh, we're going to talk about what you know the the conversations that we should talk about with each other every day. Um, so that's gonna be big. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be an important one. The voice, the voice you hear, what you're, what you're saying to yourself, what's in your mind, the, the chatter. Mm -hmm. What do they got? What book was it? The color crash the, the chatterbox. Crash the yeah. chatterbox. Yeah. Great book. It's an awesome one. Um, uh, for those of you that are on this camera here, um, on my Facebook Live, uh, make sure that you have gone over to Facebook.com/slash Sales Wolves Podcast, and this is where we put out the podcast every Friday. Uh, so appreciate you guys joining, uh, and those on the podcast or those viewing the podcast. Um, if you got any value out of this at all today, we would love for you to share it so that someone else may see it uh, and it may uh, add value uh, to their lives. Absolutely. So we will uh, see you next Friday on the next podcast. And I am Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! That sounds. That sounds weird. <laughs>